All that ahead, but first, the United States has put new travel restrictions in place as the first coronavirus death here is confirmed. A new case is also confirmed in Chicago, and the White House is planning for possible shortages of some key drugs and medical components. Vice President Mike Pence, tapped by President Trump to lead the response, tells me the risk to most Americans still remains low. Let me ask you about some of the news, the important news this weekend. And, of course, you have lifted travel restrictions from parts of Italy, parts of South Korea, Iran. Right. Uh, how are you going to enforce this? We used what's called Section 212F with China to suspend all travel back into the United States by non-citizens or legal residents. And the president's using that authority with regard to Iran. We're, we're banning all travel into the United States, even foreign nationals that have visited Iran in the last 14 days will be stopped at our border, will not be allowed to come into the United States. But for Italy and South Korea that are seeing a rising number of coronavirus cases, the president wanted to use the authority to issue a travel advisory. It's called Level 4, to tell the American people do not travel to those affected areas in Italy and in South Korea. But we're also making that connected to uh, a, a screening process that we've already initiated discussions with both countries. I understand that the FDA sent testing kits to the 50 states and then called them back and said, well, wait a minute, there are three parts to this test, but one of those parts is actually defective. So don't do the testing. Wait on the testing. I mean, is that just incompetence on the part of the FDA? Well, what I can tell you is that in my conversations with governors, and I've spoken to all of the governors that have been handling people coming back into our country uh, as Americans have returned uh, from China in particular, uh, is that we, we believe we are in the process of resolving the issues about testing kits. In fact, uh, as the director of the FDA announced yesterday, we, we have now approved uh, a, a new arrangement so that, so that states can conduct these tests on their own. But as we speak, uh, literally more than 15,000 kits are going out uh, to the relevant areas, and we'll soon be sending another 50,000 that are going to be made commercially available out to states. I mean, was the president upset that we couldn't do accurate testing initially? You know, you know South Korea has uh, testing from your car, your <laughs> drive-through testing. China says you can test from home. We haven't done the testing. Well, we, we've done a fair amount of testing. 500 but, tests? But as, look, we've, we've actually screened 47,000 people coming through designated airports uh, in the country and, um, and, and done testing at airports. But the new challenges that we have is we want to make testing kits available to local health care providers so that if someone presents with a respiratory illness, that they'll not only be tested for the flu, but they'll also be tested uh, for the coronavirus. Okay, so now that we are beginning this real ramp up of the testing, is it fair to say that we will likely hear of thousands of new cases in the United States? I don't want to. I don't want to put numbers on it, okay. but there'll be more cases. But I want to assure your viewers and people across this country that we're ready. And the the reality is that. The United States is more prepared than any other nation in the world. So in the coming days and weeks, if we see thousands of new cases, should we be not concerned? Well, we, we know that there will be many more cases. But we continue to remain hopeful that because of the vigilance of our local health officials, because of the efforts of state leaders and uh, CDC and HHS, that will be able to mitigate the spread of that. And that's the reason why the president uh, directed the immediate increase in the production of, of masks. Uh, we, we have a stockpile of some 43 million, uh, but we're already making arrangements with several American companies to begin to produce almost that amount uh, on a monthly basis. The FDA has developed a list of 150 prescription drugs that we soon will not be able to provide because all of these in active ingredients are made in China. What will the government do about protecting Americans and their health, given the fact that so many drugs are produced overseas? When we came into office, fully half of our international trade deficit was with China, and the president's taken a strong stand to change that, the new phase one China deal. 
is a beginning in that. But we'll be meeting this Monday with uh, the heads of pharmaceutical companies across this country. Um, and I've spoken to members of Congress who've expressed the very same concern. I'm going to get back to that because the supply chain issue is real important, but you just said the risk is low. It doesn't seem like Bill Gates thinks that. Bill Gates wrote in the New England Journal of Medicine, this is starting to look like, quote, a once-in-a-century pathogen. That's why he's donating $100 million for the treatment and testing. Well, I, his assessment doesn't agree with our health experts, but I'm grateful for his generosity. Okay. I am. I mean, we're all in this together, and I frankly am, am grateful for the spirit that I have heard from, from many public officials at every level, Republicans and Democrats, who have said uh, this is a time to set aside recriminations or blame and, and really work the problem. That's what the president has tasked us to do. And yet the critics of the president have ramped up the politics once again. Bernie Sanders is on the campaign trail saying, you don't have the qualifications to be running this task force. Uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says, you don't understand science. I will tell you, I'm, I, the job the president has given me to bring this team together, to drive forward to his objective, to bring a whole of government response, the full resources of the federal government to bear on the coronavirus uh, in this country is going to be my singular focus. Mr. Vice President, let me ask you about the president's conversations with Xi Jinping, because the president has said that he has spoken with him a couple of times. Has the president asked him why they're giving us such disinformation, why they have played this down from the get-go and perhaps made this worse? Let me say the president has a very strong relationship with uh, uh, President Xi. And uh, our hearts go out to the families that have lost loved ones in China and to those that are struggling with the coronavirus. It originated there. And China has been been working uh, to address the issue. There was some encouraging news uh, that uh, there were actually fewer new cases in China than in the balance of the rest of the world. And we uh, believe them. Well, we we had CDC officials that were just in China a few short weeks ago, and they informed me that they were able to look at the raw data, and from their initial look. Um, it, it did line up with much of the data that we were receiving. So we'll, we'll continue to, to ask the hard questions. We'll continue to call on China to even be more transparent than they've been. Uh, but I think the president's decision to suspend all travel out of China uh, and to establish a quarantine for Americans who are returning here um, should tell you everything you need to know about our, our overall concern about ensuring that what's been happening in China, which uh, we, we have continued and will continue to offer American support and assistance for. Mr. Vice President, this is about a vaccine. And uh, if is. a promising antiviral or a vaccine is developed, let's say it needs to pass government muster, are you willing to clear the pathways, the regulatory pathways of the FDA to get needed antivirals or vaccines to the American people? I mean, there's a bureaucratic process to go through with the FDA. It's already doing it. Um, Dr. Fauci, um, uh, made us aware a couple of days ago that because of the expedited process that the FDA has approved, we're actually going to be able to go to clinical trials in six weeks on a vaccine for the coronavirus. As Dr. Fauci said, that's from the National Institute of Health, he said, that's utterly unprecedented. Now, I, I want your viewers to know that a vaccine will go through the process and will likely not be available for this season. But we're working very earnestly with multiple providers and multiple researchers to develop a vaccine for if the coronavirus, we will deal with it in this season um, from prevention, from mitigation, from treatment. But uh, as the next season comes on, if the coronavirus persists, then we're going we're gonna to continue to work. We are clearing uh, the red tape out of the way. The FDA is providing great leadership on this front uh, to have a vaccine for the American people uh, by next year. Mr. Vice President, thank you.